we've reached the business end of the DP World ILT20, and the race for the playoffs is wide open. Tabletoppers My Emirates have secured a spot, and tonight the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders have the chance to join them. Shah Rukh Khan's men have been wonderful this season, and they now host a deflated warrior side who they blew away on Monday night in Sharjah. Captain Kola Cadmore needs to pick his team up and put in a winning performance tonight if they are to have any chance of making the playoffs. Can the Sharjah superstars inspire a Warriors comeback or will the informed Knight Riders make it four wins in a row? We're back at the Zayed Cricket Stadium for match 25. The Abu Dhabi Knight Riders hosting the Sharjah Warriors. Just two days ago, the Knight Riders ripped through the Warriors in Sharjah to earn their third consecutive win. If Sunil Narayan side pick up another victory tonight, they'll join my Emirates on 12 points and secure a spot in the playoffs. The Warriors, on the other hand, sit bottom of the table after suffering three losses in a row. Kola Cadmore needs his team to turn things around drastically tonight. We're back at the Zayed Cricket Stadium for this big match tonight. And now we have Darren Ganga with the captains for the toss. A cool breeze greets us here for the toss. The captains are here. Sunil Narine for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders. Tom Kola Kadmore for the Sharjah Warriors. And we've got uh, Simon Torfil dressed professionally as the match referee. Sunil with the coin. Heads. Warriors the call is made. And it is a head. Head. Uh, we're going to bowl first. So, Tom, if you step this way. Yeah, just tell us why you've made that decision to bowl first. Uh, I think just to know what we need to chase tonight, obviously it's a must-win game for us, so um, we're able to then know what we need and hopefully can go out and chase it down. Is it a case of winning not being everything, but the only thing for you tonight? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously our net run rate's not looking that healthy at the minute, so yeah, we need to get two wins to have any chance of getting in, so obviously there's kind of a lot on it for us tonight and hopefully we can go out and perform. Same opposition as the last game. You brought in two big-name T20 players, Rashid and Livingston. Did you have a quiet word with them about your expectations from them? No, I've got no expectations. Like, obviously, they're world-class performers, so um, it's, we're just lucky to have them in the team, and hopefully they can come out and show us what they can do. Yeah, you played here once before. What are the critical factors that you'll take into consideration to produce a win for you tonight? Uh, obviously, normally it swings a little bit more here than the other venues, so hopefully we can get some early inroads and kind of build pressure that way. Um, and then batting, um, I think it's actually looked quite a nice surface um, from kind of the whole tournament. So it's just about giving ourselves a chance as a batting order and being able to chase it down, obviously, later on in the evening. Go well today, Tom. Thank you. Let's get Sunil in here. Sunil, great to see you back. Could you tell us what your injury was that kept you off the field and how is your hand now? I'm a little bruised on the webbing, but um, it's, it's getting better. So hopefully um, today goes well. Right. Happy to, to bat first tonight. Um, if we wanted to, we'd have probably done the same. But saying that last game we played here, we, we did well batting first. So it's nothing that we have to think too much. Just try, try to apply, try to win the first six and then take it from there. Right, you started the season with a win, a couple losses, then a win and a loss, but three wins in a row. What's accounted for that consistency and success? Um, I think it's different guys stepping up to the, to the plate. Every game is someone different, and I think we always believe that we could win. So I think if you have that belief in the dressing room, it goes a long way. And I think we are playing better cricket than we were at the starting, so that's a plus. And who is going to fill that void left by Andre Russell? Um, obviously, you can't fill that void. You just have to come up with plans and situations. So hopefully, Bopara does a, a good job with the ball as he's doing with the bat as well. So we'll see how it goes and take it from there. All right, great to see you back soon. And all the very best to you and your team. Thanks. News from the middle, it's the Sharjah Warriors. They've won the toss and they will bowl first. Now the Sharjah Warriors have won the toss and chosen to bowl. We have lots coming up for you on Cricket Safari. Will the Warriors recover after their nightmare in Sharjah? David Billy reflects on the decision to retire from international cricket. And can the Knight Riders secure their place in the playoffs tonight? 
And joining me on Cricket Safari, Bakar Yunus and Simon Duell. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> nice to be here. Cool breeze tonight. It's getting cooler. I don't know what's going on with the weather in it's the UAE. It's getting UAE. cooler with the weather, but it's getting heated up in the tournament. Yeah. Business end of things. Yeah, must win for the Sharjah Warriors. They've been poor. The last two games have been really poor from them. Batting performances in particular. Look for a change from them tonight. You want them. That top order is the key. But I think the key, when we get to this pitch report shortly, will be about getting through that first three or four overs. None down maybe one at the most and then try and make the most through the middle but they need runs from the top i mean they got bowled out for 75 absolute batting collapse for the warriors at that point yeah they're they're struggling not only the two games the last three games i mean they've they've not really helped their run rate also because they lost heavily and uh, they really got to pick themselves it's a it's a difficult task it's a hard job to do that because you know when your team is playing like this and you're losing too many wickets in the power play and, and then doesn't then we don't know how to recover from that and, and that's what happened with them in the all three games which they have lost uh, uh, last time some excellent cricket by by the uh, the night riders and uh, and they look good in them yeah look Jock little bowled a terrific spell willie's been brilliant the last three games he's bowled as four overs up front so I wonder whether we'll see that again tonight. Maybe the Warriors will think, OK, we've got to go a little bit harder against David Willey. We've got to take their options away from them, make Sonny Narayan change his mind a little bit and not allow David Willey to bowl through. But it's going to be tough. And like you said, I mean, even when you talk about Josh Little, like you said, they've had players who have stepped up when it's mattered the most. Yeah, they have. Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, I've been impressed this year. They, they were so poor last year. Yeah. They could only go one direction. That was up. <laughs> and they have done it well this year. They've lost the big man, though. I think that's a huge, crucial loss. With ball, with bat, in the field. And just what he brings as a team environment. I think Andre Russell is a big loss for them. Shah Rukh Khan will be very, very happy, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And the man who's happy right now is going to be Danny Morrison. He's ready for us with the pitch report. I'm looking forward to a huge party here because the Warriors, they have to get up and win it. It's as simple as that. Now then, this looks gorgeous. Some of us not so. But I can tell you what, the boundary way out to the eastern side, 75 metres. The short side is only 60 and 75 downtown. Now, if you can see behind me, the breeze is quite strong and that will help the bowlers in terms of protection because the boundary is so much bigger than that side. Lefties going to be eyeing that up massively. The 22 yards, well, the average first inning score here this year at ILT20 is 150, 160, right? So 160 hasn't been good enough of late. The last two scores, 180 batting first has been enough. Tom Collar Cabma, he wanted yep. to bowl first. Will that be wrong on this gorgeous 22 yards? Danny, Danny, he's always having the best time. Well, now talking about the Sharjah Warriors, bottom of the table, not a good place to be at at this point for them. Really struggling with that net run rate, of us, but they have some stars, and we know that, Liam Livingston. Well, they do have stars, and they've just come maybe a touch late. They should have had uh, Livingston and uh, Adil Rashid maybe a lot earlier than this. And uh, and uh, last game especially, the way they played, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure how... Or the skipper uh, is going to pick his team up. But Livingston, no doubt, uh, you know, a match winner, a true match winner. So I would say Sharjah Warrior, Warriors need Liam Livingston to be at the crease for at least 10 overs, if not more. Absolutely. And Javadula, he's been excellent. Three wickets in the last game. Yeah, impressed with Javadula. And if you haven't faced him, the guys will have had a bit more of a chance to look at him now through the tournament. It's just that skip step. He's got slower balls. He swings the ball. He's actually decent pace too. Gets the ball up around the 140 kilometer mark. So if you haven't faced him before, it can be a little bit awkward. Kind of rushes onto you a little bit. Quite short in stature. Gets skiddy. But his short ball has caused problems as well. And that's one of the areas I'm looking for tonight. On a good surface, got a little bit of pace and bounce. Maybe he'll look for that short ball. And just his variations have been key to him. But all these players now have had a good chance to look at him. Those are the things you've got to worry about from a bowling point of view. Can I do something different or will the batters know a little bit more about me? Well, the Warriors absolutely need to step up tonight, but their team has been boosted by Adil Rashid, who caught up with our very own Niall O'Brien and gave him some tips on wrist pin. Well, it's great to have Adil Rashid alongside me here, two-time World Cup winner. And just before we came on air, he said, hopefully another World Cup on the horizon. So if you're in the Caribbean and uh, the USA in June, watch out all the other sides. Rash, thanks for your time. You've just flown into the tournament with the Sharjah Warriors. Um, a big, big opportunity for you to make a difference to this side. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, myself and also the few others, uh, like you say, like Livingston is also coming as well. So hopefully, like I said, we've got two games left. Starts today. Hopefully, myself and a few, like I said, we can put a good team performance in and, uh, and win the game, ultimately. T20 cricket has evolved and you've seen a lot of the evolution of the game. Smaller boundaries, bigger bats, fitter, stronger players. Yeah. What drives you? What motivates you to get better day in, day out? Um, I think that's just sport in general. Or, you know, you always want to get better in any format you play with this T20, 50 overs. You want to try to develop. As the batsmen are developing their shots, their game, the grounds are getting slightly smaller. So as a bowler as well, you've got to make sure that you are developing, uh, finding certain ways to try to combat their skills. If that's whatever you bowl, it's quicker, shorter, slower, more variation. It's something that as a leg spinner, off spinner or any kind of spinner, you want to try have, have in your have in the bank. Let's talk about let's talk about some of your variations because you always had a really big ripping leg break and a lovely googly. But without giving all your tricks away to all the viewers and maybe the opposition that are watching, talk us through some of your variations you use, especially in T20 cricket. Um, I think it's in terms of leg spin. I think it's pretty similar to a lot of the leg spinners. Like you see, you got the leg spinner, try to ball like you say on the seam. On a, on a good day, you might get the drift, get the dip, get the spin. Um, Hopefully try to do them in the flight. That's generally how I try to go about a lot of my bowling is maybe do the batsmen in the flight. With the leg spinner, then you've got the, you've got the googly, the wrong one. Um, like I said, I said again, a lot of leg spinners around the world have got these deliveries, the googly, so they bowl a lot of that. Whether it's, even if it's a right-hander or a left-hander, they'll try to assess the situation and bowl accordingly. For example, a left-hander, you might bowl a lot more googlies than leggies because you don't want them to hit uh, with the spin. Um, another one, like I say, is, is the slider, which is, comes out the front of the hand. You push it through, try to hopefully get the batsman stuck at the crease where they try to pull you, cut you, and it skids on, hits the pads, and gets some ball. So these are the three general like variations you try ball. And some days, like I say, it comes out nicely. Some days it doesn't. Some days it goes out the park. But that's that's T20 cricket. So the mentality you're accepting. Some days you're going to have a good day. Some days you're going to have a bad day. He's a bag of tricks. He's here with the Sharjah Warriors, and he's trying to get them a couple of wins to get them to the playoffs. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you very much. Top man. Yes, thank you. Well, he is a bag of tricks, and how would you say has his presence boosted the Warriors? World-class bowler, um, World Cup winner, experience, those sorts of things. But uh, applies his trade all around the world. He's, he's a very, very adept white ball bowler, I think. He's given away the red ball format some time ago and just plays white ball cricket. It'd be better for the first outing. I think that's the key for him. He's going to be better for the first outing. And he looks a lot these... fitter than what he was maybe two years yeah, ago, absolutely. isn't he? <laughs> I think he's, tra he's training out. And he sees a lot of these guys at that 35, 36 year um, age group, they see now that they've got two, three more years, particularly leg spinners. He could follow Imran Tahir, who's still playing at 55. <laughs> <laughs> not, quite, not quite 55, but you know what I mean. He could, he could play for a long time yeah. if he keeps himself fit as a wrist spinner. Yeah. Absolutely, and we're going to take a short break, but on the other side of the break, David Billy tells us how he keeps challenging himself and reinventing himself in T20 cricket. Welcome back. Now the Sharjah Warriors have won the toss and chosen to bowl. Let's take a look at the teams. Yeah, Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, well, they welcome back their skipper, Sonny on the Rhine, but they have lost the massive man in Andre Russell. Little was brilliant, Willie was brilliant in the last game. Their bowling unit, along with Ravi Bopara, was outstanding. What they do need is runs from the top. Joe Clark looked good. Michael Pepper's been good since coming in for Andres Oz. Uh, Ali Shan Sharafu has also looked good at different times through the tournament. Hayne and Evans will do a bulk of the scoring them, the Englishman, through that middle order as well. Uh, plenty of problems for Sharjah Warriors. The thing I couldn't understand was that they won the toss and they're looking to bowl. They should have won the toss and batted and played without any fear. But yet, when you look at it on the paper, they've got some really big names up there leaving Livingston. Captain himself playing quite nicely. Joe Denley, Williams. I mean, Dickwell is there. But the issue they're having is, is not really getting their rhythm, getting into that uh, you know winning streak at the moment. True, absolutely. And now when we talk about Knight Riders, because we need to chat about them as well, we of can't course. forget them. And there's been a very consistent Knight Rider, that is David Billy. He shared with us behind the scenes how tough it was to make a decision to retire from international cricket. Look, I think the, the timing was right for me and my family. Um, you know, I played eight years in international cricket and absolutely loved every minute of it. Um, you know, from a young boy, I've only ever wanted to put on the, the three lions and represent my country. But I think there's come a, a time in my life and my playing career where 
no, no guarantee of being in squads, no guarantee of having a contract with England. Um, you know, the, the time was right for me to, to make myself available to play franchise cricket. Brilliant from David Willey. He's been aiming for those. Look, my strength of, is, swinging, is swinging the ball. Um, so, you know, the white ball doesn't swing for very long. Um, and, you know, that's my, my biggest weapon. So I'll try and utilise that early on. I think that can be challenging, particularly when guys are, are trying to come at you. And, that is so sore. You know, I always think to myself and say to other people, if you're standing still um, with your development, you're actually going backwards. So, you know, I keep trying to not necessarily reinvent myself, but keep adding to my game or finding other ways to make subtle changes and, and, and ways to sort of outthink the opposition because, you know, I'm not, I'm not seven foot and... I don't bowl 90 mile an hour, so I have to think of other little intricate ways to, to keep developing my game. Willie strikes! Yeah, look, I had a good mentor in my dad. Um, he always said, you know, swing the white ball if you're bowling and be able to contribute in all three areas of the game. And, you know, I do try and pride myself on that, of being trying to uh, contribute to the team in, in every area I can. It's a new franchise for me to be a part of. Thoroughly enjoy my time, you know, getting them gold pads and gloves on is pretty cool. So, um, look, to going out there with a lot of players that I haven't played with before is always nice, getting to know people, learn their games, how they go about their business, um, and hopefully us coming together to, to, you know, that common goal of winning games of cricket. It's incredible when he talks about everyone sharing that one common goal to come together for cricket. Yeah, he is no doubt a very skillful cricketer. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't smile much, which is which is sad. But uh, you know, he brings a lot to to uh, to the night riders. He is a he's a wicket taker early on. Bowls nice and straight. The best thing about him is he allows the ball to swing. He picks it up, and if there is anything in the surface or any you know the ball stopping or moving off the surface, he will make sure that he extracts all of that and. Uh, we haven't seen him bat yet. He can really, really bat also. And now, Simon, Knight Riders batting is going to have to really set up. They're going to miss Ray Russ. So yeah. is it all going to be on Pepper and Hayne? Well, it is going to be on Pepper and Hayne. I think the English have to stand up. When you think about Pepper, Hayne, Evans, they're going to have to stand up and, and put in a performance for the Knight Riders. Dre Russ has finished innings off. He's been the number one man at the back end of the innings. He's got them to positions where they've been able to score massive runs at the back end. But you look at Michael Pepe, you think about Sam Hayne, Evans, they've got the talent, but the English need to stand up tonight for me. If they are to do well, they put runs on the board, then they're every chance. I just want to get to final predictions. This is where it heats up with the commentators. <laughs> I love Shah Rukh Khan, so I have to go with the uh, Knight Riders. I love Shah Rukh Khan as well, but I've gone for the Warriors. <laughs> All right, it's a split decision. I guess we're going to have to wait and find out because on the other side of this break, it's going to be the Knight Riders taking on the Sharjah Warriors.